Okay, so we're just going to review some of the terminology with regards to powers and roots. So the first part regarding on fruit, we've been working on powers. Remember, it's a shorthand for writing the product of a number multiplied by itself two or more times. Composed of a base, that's the big number, and the exponent is the little number up top. Okay, so the exponent tells you how many times you multiply the base together. So we did one like this when we actually did the lesson. The volume of this cube as a power. Well, remember, volume of a cube or any prism is length times width times height. Okay, so this, these are all the same if it's a cube. So volume equals 9 times 9 times 9, which is 9 cubed. Okay, you can evaluate it. It just says write it as a power. And this would be centimeters cubed as well. Okay, so then what we're going to reviewing today, you've seen square roots, but we're learning more about them. So a root, that's an operation used to undo a power. An inverse, basically, of uh, taking a power. So when you are multiplying, the opposite is dividing. When you're adding, the opposite is subtracting. When you're squaring, the opposite is square rooting. When you raise a uh, number to a power of three, the opposite is cube rooting taking the third root. So it's not just square roots, we can take any root, okay? And that's where this little number at the corner of your root symbol tells you what root you're taking. If there's nothing shown there, okay, then um, I think I have a note somewhere, but if there's nothing shown there, it means square root. So square roots are the most common. They're the ones that we do most frequently. So the notation is, if there's no little number there, it means the square root. Okay, so just be aware of that. You're pretty used to that already. Um, be aware if n is even, so square root, or fourth root, or sixth root, an even number there, then the radicand must be positive. So the radicand is the number underneath the radical sign. It has to be positive because you can't take a root an even root of a negative number, because this means if it's even, we have to have an even number of factors. And remember, if you are, um, if your radicand is a negative, then really one of those factors in there is a negative and one's a positive. So they're not equal. Okay, so it has to be positive if n is even. And we'll get into some practice of that. So let's take a look here. It says the volume of the cube shown to the right is 27. So now we know the volume. It's a cube. It says determine the side length. So really here, x cubed is 27. That's what we're told. So in order to work backwards, so there's my therefore symbol, that little triangle of, of dots. X is going to equal the cube root of 27. The opposite of cubing is cube rooting. So opposite of squaring is square rooting. So we take the cube root of 27. Think about what that means. That means we need three equal factors multiplied together. Okay? So who can tell me what that might be? What is what are three equal factors multiplied together to give you 27? One, 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 yeah. Three. Exactly. Okay, so here x is three. Figure it Okay. And that would be in centimeters. So to solve for x in the last example, which would be in cubes, you have to apply the cube root operation. This is because they are inverse oper operations of each other. Root will undo a cube just like a multiplication of five can undo with a division of five. Opposite order, the opposite operations. Okay. So the there's a de, just a definition there of inverse operation, the operation that reverses the effect of the original. So here's a little chart here. If your original operation was squaring, then the inverse is square rooting. And you 
don't need to show that little tree. Okay. If your original was cubing, then the inverse is cube root. The little three, like an exponent size, up in the, the left corner outside the radical. Fourth power is four three. Okay. All right. So what's helpful when you are dealing with radicals is to know your perfect squares and perfect cubes, uh, some of your numbers based on exponent 4, etc. Uh, we're going to stick to numbers between 1 and 10 for perfect squares, okay? And then perfect cubes a little bit fewer than those. So, uh, hopefully, you've done this before in junior high math, okay? But uh, let's go through it again. So, perfect squares, try not to use a calculator. And think about what that means. So 1 squared is 1 times 1. Okay, so the perfect square is 1. 2 squared is 2 times 2. So that's 4. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. So I'll give you a couple minutes to finish that part. So, really good idea to have those memorized, those perfect squares from 1 to 100. Not just for right now, but for next semester at 10C, for map uh, 20, for map 30, good idea to have those memorized. So, when you're taking the square root, remember that's the opposite order of opera opposite operation. So, really, like for example, I'm not going to do 1 to start. But 4 squared is 16. Now if we take the root of 16, we're back, getting back to that original base. So that's back to 4. Okay, so if these radicands are perfect squares, it just goes back to the original base. So this would be 3, 2, 1. Now these are in order here because I, if you take a look, I'm matching them up. But always check what the radicand they're not always going to be in order, right? So that's going to be 5. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36, so that'll be 6. 7 squared is 49, so that'll be 7. 8 squared is 64, so that'll be 8. 9 squared is 81, so that'll be 9. And root of 100 is 10. Okay? So any square root of a perfect square, pretty straightforward. Okay? You don't need a calculator. We're really not going to deal with any decimals of square roots. We're going to be simplifying. We'll go through that in a minute. So, perfect cubes. Now we're cubing a number. So I did go up to 10 here. Really, probably we're going to best to know up to maybe 6 cubed and then skip to 1,000 because that's pretty easy to figure out. In any case, let's do this. So 1 cube is still going to be 1. So 2 cubed, that's really 2 squared times 2. So that's going to be 8. That's 3 cubed is really 9 times 3. So if you try not to use a calculator, that's how you can, uh, it can help you. 4 cubed is really 4 squared times 4. Okay. So you try to use those. If you need your calculator, then use it. Let's see if you can challenge yourself with that. Okay. So once you get up to here, so 25 times 5 is 125. 
36 times 6, if you're not sure, just multiply by 6 there, so that's going to be uh, 36, 318, 216. Not by 7, that's going to be what, 63, 6, 243. Okay, then times 8 here, that's 32, so 512, times 9 here, okay, and actually you can see the column here too, kind of gives, you, gives it away. Uh, 10 feet, we've already reviewed that, right, that means you have three zeros. And then cube root is just the opposite. So if these match up, then you're just going back to the base. So 1, 2, cube root of 27 gets you back to 3. Cube root of 64 gives you back to 4. And 5. So all of these are in order. Keep this chart in front of you, okay, when you're doing uh, root questions. I'll even give this to you on your um, test in a week and a half, okay? Because there will be a part without a calculator, all right? So having that chart, that can help you. You don't have the use of the calculator. Okay, so now let's do some work with these, okay? So radicals can come in two forms, entire radicals and mixed radicals. We want to see how to convert between them. So now I'm going to ask you to use your calculator to find the value of each and round to the nearest hundred. That's two decimal places. So you're going to enter root 18. Let me just get my calculator out here. Okay, so root of 18. Square root root button on the graphing calculator is second x squared. Often it be the second key or inverse key on your calculator of x squared. You can just enter on that. Okay, two decimal places is 4.24. With a mixed radical, that really means multiplication. So in graphing calculator, you can go 4 square root 5. Okay, you can cursor out. Or you can go 4 times square root 5. It means the same thing. Okay, so check your calculator. Do 4 root 5, do you get the same? If your calculator is a scientific and you cannot see the square root sign when you enter it, that means you actually have to put the 5 in first, or the 18 in first, and then press the square root button. So if you cannot see the little square root symbol on your calculator, put 18 first, then press it. Okay, um, so continue doing that. So if you have a graphing calculator, uh, like a TI or other graphing, it will be, there's another place you can look, look for other roots. So that's going to be in uh, math key. And if you go down, number four is a cube root. So if I'm doing cube root of 32, 
I'll get 3.17. Okay. Um, if you did, like, if you had a fourth root, then in the graphing calculator, you would go down to x root. Okay. And you'd actually, in the newer versions, put in a four. Cursor to the right, put in whatever your. Okay, so we filled in all the decimal values. We're told to round. As I said, we're not going to do this that much. So um, we are going to look here, though, to match these up because we have some same values. So it says examine the decimal values where the matching mixed radical to the given entire radical. So root 18, which one matches? So it matches for... Uh, both of these have 4.24 as their decimal answer, so that's the same as 3 root 2. Root 40 is the same as 2 root 10. Root 80 is the same as uh, 4 root 5. Cube root 32 is the same as 2 cube root 4. And the last two actually match up in the order there. Okay, so we have to figure out how those are equal, how we can get from root 18 to 3 root 2. So when you take a look at, um, we're going to do root 18 in the next chart below. So take a look. We're actually going to figure out the work that gets us there we're not going to use decimals. All of these square roots or cube roots that do not work out nicely, so they, they can't get back to a single value where you don't have to round, basically, um, are irrational numbers. And you'll learn more about that in Math 10C. But basically, any decimal that does not repeat or terminate is an irrational number, and a whole bunch of them come from radicals. Other ones are like pi that we talked about, but mostly from uh, irrationals, from some trig, etc. So, expressing radicals as mixed numbers means to write them in simplified form. So that means when the radicand contains no perfect square factors other than what? So, for square roots, we always express the radicand as a product of two numbers, where one of them is the largest perfect square that divides into the radicand. I'm not just going to uh, write out those perfect squares again on the side here. So 1, 2 squared is 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. So we want to show 18 as a product with one of these numbers, okay? So obviously, I don't even consider anything bigger than 18. I love 10. Does 16 go into 18? Not even. Does 9? Yeah. So I show this as a product. I'm just going to switch to blue, sorry. 9 times 2. OK. 
Okay. I'm showing every step here. You're going to get hopefully to the point that you don't have to show all of them. A, a, a property of radicals is if you've got two factors, you can split them up into the radical each separately. And then we know from our chart that root of 9 is 3. So it goes out of the radical and the 2 stays. Okay. So I kind of have a, a silly analogy, but I think about this. Once I split it up into the biggest perfect square, then I look, I don't end up showing it separated like this. I kind of skip this step and I just circle that biggest perfect square. And I consider the radical sign like the roof of your house. And I say, well, the perfect child gets to go out on the weekend. If you haven't behaved, you don't get to. So the perfect square gets to go out on the weekend dressed as three. They dress up, right? So they take the root of nine, they get to go out, and it's root three. The non-perfect child has to stay home. Okay? So that's just my silly analogy. But a lot of times, people will split this up perfectly. Okay? But then they put the two out front, and they leave the nine. It doesn't make sense. Okay? doesn't have the same value. So the next one... Let's do this. So I show this as a product of two numbers. I take a look at my list. Obviously, I don't care about anything bigger than 24. 16 doesn't go in. 9 doesn't go in. 4 does. So I show this as 4 times 6. I circle my perfect square. Perfect square gets to go out on the weekend. The six has to stay home. Okay? So I don't show uh, that middle step that's in brackets on the left. Okay? How can you check? Your calculator will not simplify radicals. If you have a scientific that does, then you actually can't use that on a test. So, um, and when you get to a diploma exam, you can't use it. So, if you want to check though, which you can, is you get out your calculator and you enter root 18 to find the decimal form of it and then you enter what you think the simplified form is 3 root 2 and you make sure that those decimals are the same that means you haven't changed anything a common mistake as i said people will say oh that's going to be um 2 root 9 sometimes they will say so 2 root 9 Okay, that's six is not the same. Or sometimes they'll uh, take the root of, of nine but leave it underneath the radical, so they might say two root three. In any case, they're not the same, right? So you can at least check your answers. It won't simplify it for you, but it will check it. Okay, so the next one, negative root 50. Now a negative outside the radical, that they okay. You can have anything you want outside there. So I'm just going to leave it outside, okay? And then, because sometimes we'll have numbers outside too, right? So I'll uh, leave it outside and look at your list. So 50, you're not even going to consider anything bigger than 50. Obviously 49 doesn't divide into it. Neither does 36, but 25 does. So if you have 0 or 5 at the end, always check 25. So this is 25 times 2, circle the 25, and then just copy out the negative that was there, root of 25 is 5, so 25 gets to go out on the weekend, 2 has to stay home. Okay. Some of you, if you start on this end, we'll say 4. 
That works, but it's not going to be completely simplified because your radicand will still be able to be simplified. So you have to do two steps. If you start from the right and look left, then you get the biggest one. So 36, take the square root. So 36 is 6, the 2 has, has to stay home. So that's square roots. And then the next one, very similar, except for you're looking for perfect cubes. So here, some perfect cubes. One cube is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64, five cubed is 125. We'll just go up to five, okay? Taking a look at it, like those numbers are pretty small. So we don't even need um, to more print this with to put in this sheet. So, same thing. Got to be careful that you use the little three. If you drop that three, then it changes it to a square root, which changes the value. So, 32, I'm not going to look at anything bigger than 32. Does 27 go into 32? No. Does 8? Yes. Okay, so this will be 8 times 4. Which again, you can split it up into the two separate radicals. That's ideally, that's really what you're doing, but we don't have to show that step. Or you could show this one instead of this. Okay. And then, now, this is still your roof. Okay. Your eight gets to go out on the weekend, the perfect cube here, and the four is not, so it has to stay. So the eight, when you take the cube root, is two. And the four has to stay. Okay. So some students might write two. They might get the numbers right, but they forget the, the three. And so when you check that, okay, so cube root of 32, find the decimal four, and then two cube root of four. Same decimal four. If I just done two square root of four, you can see that you get a different value, right? The square root of four is two. So um, that is not the same. So it ends up being really for a lot of students, they understand the concept, but then they're kind of lazy with the work that they took, right? And then they get it wrong because of that. Sometimes being good at math is good attention to detail. All right, so then this one, cube root, 54. So again, not going to look past that. Does 27 go into 54? It does. Okay, it goes in twice. It's a perfect cube, so I circle it. And it gets to go out on the weekend. What is it worth? It's worth.